Lars von Trier jeste poznat po tome što jeste poznat po tome što realnost i film ne razdvaja, nego ih spaja u jedno i koristi sve moguće filmske trikove i svu tehniku ne bi li vršio pritisak na gledalca i u stvari došao do realizacije svoje ideje. To me sada dovodi na jedno pitanje za vas u jednom intervju Lars von Trier je izrekao rečenicu on dosta ovako rijetko daje kredite pogotovo snimateljima znamo da je u Breaking the Ways kroz tala se uzimao kameru u Robi Milleru i radio sam izjavio je da je kad je sa radio Melancholiju sa vama pokušao da snima ali je vrlo brzo odustao jer nije bio dorastao tome rekao je I'm not up to it Tako da, kasnije sam gledao jednu intervju gdje ste vi to objašnjavali, pa nam recite malo kako je to, kako je izgledalo raditi iz ruke sa rediteljim koji precizno zna šta želi i kakav je taj odnos i konekcija između vas morala biti da bi imao povjerenje u vas toliko. Ja, I think I first of all Uh, Lars has a large body of work, so I felt that I knew his taste and what he likes. Mm. I think that's a big part of being a cinematographer is to understand the director and to, to uh, yeah, I mean, in the end, the most important thing is that they feel that you're doing their movie. Uh, uh, so it, I think, you know, because he has this large body of work, I, I kind of have a feeling that I know his taste and then in that sense I think it's quite easy for to it was quite easy to like get into his mindset mm. and his uh, because uh, he's very very specific about certain things but he's also completely open about other things in general acting scenes are there's no plan mm. and but then he has all these more visual moments uh, which also often require a lot of VFX uh, there he's very specific, we have done very detailed uh, storyboarding, uh, but then there's all the like, more acting-based uh, scenes where he has no ideas. <laughs> Not that he doesn't have any ideas, he has many ideas, but he doesn't share them. He's very, he really wants to see what happens on the set, what, what is the energy on the set. And that of course is, uh, and, and of course as an operator, uh, you are a huge part of, uh, of that uh, of the creation of scenes like that, and that's um, so uh, because you're kind of choosing what to show and what not to show. Yes, yes. yes. And uh, but you know, he he. When we did Melancholia, which was our first collaboration, the first week he would sometimes tell me. Uh, when I was operating, he would tell me. Uh, uh, I don't like that. I can tell that you know the script. I can tell that you know what the next line will be. Uh, I, I don't like that crappy Hollywood operating. What, uh, that's what he would say. Uh, he, you should operate as if you were uh, there and li hearing this for the first time. Like an actor. In like an actor, place. like another character in the scene who is reacting intuitively, sp spontaneously to, to what's going on. And, and then, you know, I've seen his, because I would never operate like that in other movies because you're always very concerned that, uh, you know, this has to cut, the, the, you know, it has to cut well, it has to edit well, but with Lars, it doesn't matter how well you do it, he will always choose the shitty operating. He will always <laughs> choose when the, you know, he will always cut a movement like this with a movement like that. Uh, he will always jump the, jump the line, whatever, you jump the axis on purpose because he wants to like uh, like uh, disintegrate the room he he wants to be he's he's not really editing like in a classical sense he's more like in i i call it he's just putting together a string of moments uh, yes yeah once once you tell that if you watch the frame you will throw up and uh, and if you watch the 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 the, the actors and essence of the of the story you will follow them he didn't mind uh, the, the shaky camera. No, no, he loves the shaky camera. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the, the, act, the, the viewers didn't mind the shaky camera if they concentrate that's true, on that's the... That's true, that's true. I think if you are... Um, what he also says is uh, he's still surprised, you know, that this 
He's been doing this camera style since uh, the early 90s mm. uh, with the, the Kingdom or Breaking the Waves and he's still surprised that it's considered uh, like modern. <laughs> he's I've been doing this for like 25 years and it's still considered to be progressive and modern yes. and the only thing I'm doing is actually I'm just chasing the great acting and that because that's the only thing that people connect to is when you have great acting uh, uh, and it works it's like it's like if the problem is when you when you edit a film more traditionally you you have to go on you have to compromise a lot on maybe not so good acting or not so great moments because to make like the story flow in a more like a beautiful way but when, if you just cut all the bad stuff out and only keep the great moments then you have that's his uh, that's what he tells me and he, he's like he's very uh, surprised that uh, that it's still considered modern to do this. Mi ćemo sad u jednom trenutku i pustiti vas da postavite pitanje. Još jednu stvar kad smo sad pričali o ovome pristupu, fontrirao mi toj slobodi koju vi imate, to i na početku smo rekli podrazumeva jedno ozbiljno obrazovanje, pogotovo u domenu vizualne istorije umjetnosti i pogotovo vizualnih umjetnostkog slikarstva. Često se u filmovi Melancholi imamo te trenutke nekog omaža ili simbolike u Brojgelovim slikama, Brichelu, sa kombinacije sa početne scene Ofelija, neko podsjećanje, neka reminiscencija na Ofeliju, da bi to bio kao neki uvod u karakter Justin u filmu Melancholija. Koliko je to važno za vas bilo da imate te neke omaže i simboliku u vizualnim umjetnostima? The thing is that these omažes are very, are there in the script. So it's not that important, you could say, because they're there, it's not, it's not like, you know, they're very obvious the the homages in 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 Lars's film he's a huge lover of art history of in general just uh, literature and he's a, like a what you would call a cultivated person mm. i guess uh, and he loves to show this and he loves to pay homage to to great artists tarkovsky from, yeah he loves tarkovsky he loves there's a lot of um, uh, like any like Cinema from before 1980, I think he is. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a lot of heroes there, mm -hmm. but um, I don't think. Of course, I think um, f uh, for me personal, I, it's 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 important to have knowledge about art history. It's, uh, but I don't. I wouldn't say in in the work of with Lars, it's not um, it's not that important because he is very clear about his mm -hmm. uh, his homages to. To, to art and uh, I would um, for example I actually I actually felt that both in uh, in the opening of Melancholia which is a is <coughs> probably I mean we can discuss this but I think it's probably one of the most like painterly openings of a mm -hmm. film or not even opening sequence in a in a cinema in a, in a film in, a, yeah. in cinema and uh, but I felt we could have gone much further. I felt we could have gone much further, like in in in. Yeah, in, you, you in complain in, about the digital look of, of yes. Phantom Camera. <laughs> yeah, I think it still looks digital. I think it still has. It, it's not a the the texture of the image is not sexy. I think, uh, but Lars was happy, so <laughs> I was like, okay, fine. And I have the same problem with this uh, with this shot we have in the house that Jack built, where they're on the boat. This also yes. slow motion yes. shot. Yes. Um, I think it looks. Uh, I think it looks like a a, a, a nice homage, but I don't think yes. it, it goes beyond and does like uh, and becomes its own painting. Uh, even though it's pretty impressive, it was impressive. It was uh, it was so much fun to do, <laughs> but uh, but I felt we could have. Uh, but I, for, I don't know Lars for for some reason. I mean, in the end, I'm, I've I've never. I can say my feeling, and he will just say, mm, "I don't think so." But, <laughs> but, but, uh, 
but uh, and and uh, you know he's he's in my opinion a genius so he 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 knows what he's doing you know i'm not going to teach him to make cinema <laughs> thank you eh sad bih dao priliku vama da postavite neko pitanje ukoliko želite našem gostu ja sam vidio sve gore rekli ste da ste radili reklamu na dormitoru o čemu se radi i da li je gledao neke novoske filmove i kakav je njegov stava ko jeste o snimanju o rad naš I think you need to repeat the question because the translator ah. couldn't hear it. Uh, 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 from uh, uh, National TV, so TV uh, Montenegro, they ask, um, uh, uh, they know that you should sh sh shot in, uh, in uh, Montenegro, on the meter. Did you? <laughs> they know? Yes. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did, you, did you watch some of uh, uh, Montenegrin movies or? Uh, no, the only Montenegrin movie I know is this uh, film I, I shot myself called Maya with uh, Mariana yes. Jankovic, which is a short film that we f uh, was filmed in Denmark about her as a child coming from Montenegro to to Denmark. Uh, that's the uh, sorry, that's the only Montenegrin connection I have. Uh, it's. Um, yeah, we I shot in Dormitor a few years ago, but it was for a commercial, uh, an um, a U.S. commercial. Um, yeah. On the Black Lake. On the Black Lake and in the mountains, it was. Uh, we came for the beautiful <laughs> locations. Gospodin Klaro je snimao film sa Mariano Janković, koja je poriklo mi Crne Gore iz Berana, koja živi u u ovaj u Danskoj i snimila jedan vrlo zanimljiv i nagrađivan film Maja. Bio je prošle godine na festivalu, Podgorica film festivalu, tako da on priča o tome da je to konekcija. No, it's okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the reasoning, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, the, you know, he, he he just sometimes loves to like break this fourth wall or whatever it's called, <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, no, no, he was very specific about he wanted. No, no, we had to place the mirror like in a super specific angle and stuff, and I had to do like and make it look like it was an accident, and I don't. know. <laughs> it was. Uh, uh yeah um i guess you know sometimes he, he, he just wants to remind the audience that he that they're watching a movie yes. <laughs> to je karakteristično za fontrira da 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 ovaj u svakom trenutku pokušava da razbi iluziju o, da se radi o, o realnosti što se vrlo često u filmu radi mi u filmu imitiramo stvarnost i pokušavamo da to da to bude neprimetno kod njega je od prvog do, do posljednjeg filma to uh, potpuna dekonstrukcija ovaj stvarnosti i svim tim raznim pokretima kamere uh, pokušava da, da nas ovaj izbaci iz ravnoteže i dovede u dovede u tu neku stanje između hipnoze i i, i ovaj stvarnosti tako da it might have been an homage to another film, but probably to a lot of other films. Uh, I have a recollection of some, I don't know if it was a Truffaut or a Godard movie, where where suddenly you see the crew in the mirror. Ah, this is Godard. Yeah. Uh, and Truffaut in uh, American Night. Yeah. So I think he just felt like he's he was in the in this chain of... Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the uh, melancholy uh, u, u melancholiji ovaj, uh, u okruženju kako jeste da se ne smiju pomjerati stolice to se nešto vrati, onaj dogma stil ovaj, i tu ste jednom rekli da je veoma bilo teško <laughs> jeste morali kroz sve stolice da se provođete s kamerom u ruci i tako tu je postojala opasnost od svega toga da se vidi dio ekipe i to ali je kaže dobio na tome da su glumci, da se glumci osjećali mnogo bolje i da nisu znali ni ko ih snima ni s koje strane ni to je to je ovaj kako je to kako je to izgledalo vama u tom trenutku to je to bilo vrlo teško 